I call this meeting the Parent Independent School District to order that the record show that a quorum of board members are present and that this meeting has been duly called and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of service that you get, that you allow us to do for this district. We ask, Lord, that you open our mind tonight to the things that will be said here, that we make decisions that are truly valuable for both our faculty, our administration, our students, and in accordance to your ways. These things we say in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Do we have anybody for open forum? Nobody for open forum. With that said, uh, the board will now convene in a closed meeting to discuss the following items posted on our agenda this evening as allowed by the Texas Government Code uh, 551.070 oh, 551.074 personnel matters. Call this meeting back to order. We're ready for reports. First thing up is superintendent's report. Okay, guys, the first thing we have is resignations, uh, certified personnel's resignations for the 2021-2022. Uh, Periton High School, uh, Eric North, technology instructional coach, is resigned. Uh, Periton Junior High, Burgundy Shed, at technology applications. And Wright Elementary, uh, Kathy Wilkerson, uh, LV, I think, Nurse, I'm just going to say nurse because I'm not sure what her. Okay. Okay. Legislative update. <clears throat> uh, the legislative update for this last session we had, uh, Region 16 is going to do a workshop on August 10th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, we can, if you all want to, we can go as a group in person to Region 16 in Amarillo and be there. We can zoom it and basically do it here and watch it on television if we'd rather do that. But we got to do that. We got to register in advance. Uh, this is one of the requirements that you do have to do legislative update every time there's one. And so I just need an idea of, of what you all think you all would rather do so we can register. I'll say zoom. I'll say zoom. zoom. You, can, you can also zoom it at home if you want. Um, I can just go ahead and register everybody and we'll just pay for everybody. I'm not sure the cost. Okay, so who would want to Zoom at home or Zoom here and watch together? All together so we can't talk to each other? Yep. Yeah, yeah, other? Zoom here. Don't say Your deal's not on anyway, so I heard you say that. Okay, so we'll do that. Register us. We'll Zoom in and watch it on television here. And so we, we don't need to respond to the email. You're going to have to register. I'll just go ahead and register everybody. All right, thank you. Okay. And the other thing, if we're all here together, we've got to have it, I guess, posted as a meeting 72 hours prior because we've got more than four members sitting here together. Yep. So we'll have to post it on August 6th, that Friday, okay. that we're going to have a meeting. All right. Uh, let's say update. Pre-K building update. Okay, pre-K. Uh, guys, we're trying to get that pre-K building going. Uh, if you've been over by there, the city's already did a resolution, I believe, uh, to uh, do the street as a school zone. Uh, there's a fence up. Already put the fence up. It's a metal fence. It's not completely done, but it will be done for too long. There are gates. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Darren. There, that's the fence. There's the gate that we just added to it so we could get in and out back there. Go ahead there. This is the flooring in there. It's that vinyl flooring. Uh, we had a hard time getting it. Now it, it's all in. Uh, you can see the borders on it are not in yet. We still have to get that done. Uh, probably still needs to be rolled. Uh, put it all down a while. Uh, anyway, we're pushing the limit. We knew we'd get there. Uh, we still got to have cabinets put in there, being done in Liberal or somewhere. I don't know where Dr. Rock, but anyway, we're calling them every day and saying we need these cabinets because we want to get everything in there and set so the teachers can go in there and set up. And school's fixing to start. 
So anyway, uh, the other thing is we got to have it inspected too, don't we? Uh, but Correct. We have to go through inspection for Head Start before we can put kids in it. So everything's being pushed to to get it done. I think it's going to be a good thing. All the parking that the junior high people have been parking up there and then walking across are now going to have to park in the back. So there could be some issues there with you know people unhappy that have to park in the back. But that's the only place for them because the parents are going to pull in there, drop off, and circle in and pull out. So we can't have vehicles in that par in that parking area. Uh, on the softball field, uh, pitchers here. They dug with the dugout and the backstops going. They dug all that out so they can do that. They pulled up the cement all around in different places. There's the press box right there, so you can see all that cement is going now. Uh, bleachers have been moved. They're back over in this corner now. Whoops, now we're back to that one. Uh, so on that one, uh, I talked to Jim Powell uh, this afternoon, and he said we're waiting on the poles still. Mm -hmm. They were four weeks out. We still got another week, probably waiting on the poles to be powder coated. Uh, probably another week for the block for the dugouts to start doing the dugouts. Um, we have had two invoices, I believe, if I'm correct, Doug. There, one they had to move sprinkler system, so we didn't mash the sprinkler system before we started all this work. And then I think the other one was demolition of of what they've done on pulling the concrete out of there. Uh, David Pearson, who's who's going to raise the press box up so we can do that. He's got a job in Hereford and probably be out a week before he can get back to town to, to raise that up and then pour the concrete underneath that. But I'm feeling better even, just even out there looking at it now, man, you can see the difference in <laughs> elevation on everything. I can see how the water was running back that way. Was, <clears throat> we're fixing the right problem, I think. I think we're, we're at the right place here on that. Uh, any questions on any of that stuff, pictures you saw? I don't think, Doug said this too, I don't think we'll have the whole project done at the end of this budget year. So it's going to be a little messy going into two different years with that. But that's where we're at. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? If not, we'll move on for to director's reports. Ranger Roundup Learning Center. Okay. Appreciate your work on that grant. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Alan, maintenance report. Okay. All right. It was pretty lengthy. It was pretty lengthy. <laughs> pretty lengthy. But that's all right. That's all right. Alan, uh, the, any of the roofing issues that you address in here, do any of those, those go back on the new roofs that we just put in a couple, three years ago, or is this all on? No, this is <clears throat> right now. We've got the Williams campus and we right. still has the original roof. Several leaks over the last couple of years over there. Twenty-two year old roof now. Right. Uh, the side swing at the high school put in the same time. It's still gravel, but it, it has enough pitch to it, it's not having a lot of problems with the stuff that run off. Right. The other one of course was the portable that I mentioned in there, the high school portable. Okay. And most of it is where our joints are. Right. Where they seen those seven sections together. It's just all over the building. It's just showing up randomly here in different places. Right. <coughs> like I said in there, we had JW put us kind of a silicone seat <coughs> about three years ago or so. And it's just a band-aid. Right. Band -aid basically. So. Okay. It's not, none of this is under any kind of warranty, Alan? But if we don't fix that, we're going to continue to have problems until we. Right. We don't fix that roof. I mean, it's just, it's a way of portable. They just put the cheapest lines in there and put it in. You get up and walk on it, it's like walking on tin foil. And we fix some rotting, wood rotting issues because of water running down the side. It was kind of a hidden deal. 
Communication and safety report. Um, nothing to add. Okay. Technology report. I think that's self explanatory. Food service. Yes, we got our approximate SSO reimbursement rates for this current year. It's going to be $4.30 per child for lunch and $2.46 per child for breakfast. So that's like almost. Well, six seventy-eight per day if they eat lunch and breakfast. Last year it was three fifty-three for lunch and a dollar eighty-nine for breakfast. So it's a okay. significant increase. So okay. and then we're <coughs> going to go ahead and open the grab and go for the community. And also that enables us to uh, feed the range around the learning center, breakfast and lunch. So we're working on getting all that done. All right. Any report from high school? Like I said, let this up this time last year. Just want to thank the custodial staff for the beautiful last year. Things worked really hard. And Alan got a paint crew out there paint I think everything was about a couple, couple of wives in here. I think got their office painted. Okay. So, okay. I think people were happy. So okay. get the kids back in and just have a normal year. Yeah. There you go. Dent, do you got anything from your campus? No, sir. Okay. That's all on all on our reports. We're now ready for curric uh, curriculum and instruction reports, Dr. Rock. We have been in full planning mode all summer. So we believe we have most of our training ready for the beginning of the year. We have some de detail final details that we are trying to iron out with campuses. Uh, but we're excited about the year. Uh, we've had some training for administrators as well. I can assure you that they have been engaged, they've been educated, and hopefully empowered with our Texas instructional leadership. And we hope that that excitement carries on, carries over to the staff. So um, thank you for your support and helping us plan Great. for the professional development. Right. In the last board meeting, I did uh, make a mistake in duplicating a report for kindergarten. I duplicated the math report and did not add the reading. So you will see that attached on here. Our uh, board outcomes for kindergarten reading, we did meet our targets. You will see the chart that was attached on there. We, our targets were at 46. And we did end up with our bilingual class at 65% and our English class at 74%. So well above the targets, we'll be revisiting the targets this year again, so this gives us some baseline data. Kudos to Mr. Right. And then last, um, just want to propose the possibility of a tuition-based program for pre-kindergarten. Currently, we offer a free pre-K program for those that need eligibility based on the criteria set by Texas Education Agency. Uh, so we would like to propose that for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, if this is an option that we would like to move into, this coming year would be our planning year so that we can prepare for that. Uh, that would mean that any of the students that uh, do not meet the eligibility for the free program would be charged tuition so that they can join our pre-K program that we currently have uh, running at the Perryton Kinder Campus. Do you have any idea what kind of response we would have? Um, not yet, um, but we do have some pre-enrolled uh, families that came came in to pre-enroll their, their children, and they did not meet quali quali uh, they did not qualify for the pre-K program. But so, but yes, so we are looking at seeing if they are interested. And then uh, we would also look at the range of Roundup and pull in their four-year-olds. They're already paying tuition and moving them over to the uh, pre-K program with the, the ISD. What would that require? Less additional certification or just a policy statement from the board saying, go ahead? Uh, we would need to submit a letter to the Commissioner of Education, letting them know that we, Periton ISD, would like to start a tuition program for pre-K. Uh, we have a sample letter that's provided by TEA already. 
we just need to let them know and then set up the tuition and visit with parents on what that would look like and create a handbook for the tuition-based program. Do you have any dist districts around here to pattern that off of that you know of? Not that I know of, okay. but we would be doing the research to see okay. if there are any, any in the area. All right. Any other things, Dr. Roth? Any, any other questions? Yeah. Any other questions for Dr. Roth? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on now. Uh, Doug, you're up. Uh, first is our disbursements report. There's several sections of that. Starting on page uh, 13, our pending checks for July. I think there's a page of those. And then skip over some cover sheets there and go to page uh, 19, 18, 19, which are district checks for the month of July. It's, it's like the seven pages of those. And then the last, the last section on page 25, 26 is the uh, complete disbursements list for the month of June, uh, pages 1 through 21 of those. Uh, moving on to our financial report, starting on page uh, 47. Page 48 is our, our cash position, the summary of our accounts, the total $407,000 there on, in total. Our general operating funds on 49, uh, 8,585,800 includes CDs of uh, 8,415,000. And our schedule of those CDs is uh, attached on page 50 there. Interest in sinking funds of a million one forty six four thirty eight includes CDs of the same amount. Checking account is up to 68 cents. The CD schedule is on page 52. Cafeteria funds uh, 52,888. No CDs, special education fund is 276,518. Include CDs of 150,000. Uh, they're on page 56. Activity accounts 386662. Include CDs of 335,982,60. Uh, schedule of those on page 58. Capital projects fund CDs of uh, 12142. Train to Roundup. Uh, 14,81487. Now our financial statement there for our general funds, uh, page 62, and a spreadsheet for them there, our total revenues of 17,000, 17 million 863,000, expenditures of 17 million 929,000. Including the cross there where it summarizes capital outlay 275,716, and our, our Recap of our capital outlay expenditures there. You can see that on page 63. Of course, we still have uh, the softball project in progress and the, the portable building project is still in progress too. I think that's going to be a little bit uh, under that line item, but we could we'll move some things around to make it work for, for the full year. I don't think we're going to end up, obviously, the the softball project is not going to get completed this fiscal year, and hopefully, we're hoping that the the portable building project is going to get completed. But it, it should be probably substantially completed by year end too. But, but we'll, we'll be in good shape in that function there at the end of the year. Uh, the financial statements in our uh, financial statement format: see our revenues of 17 million. 863,547 is 80.68%. Our expenditures, page 67, is uh, 17,929. Again, we've expended 80.54% 80, 80 of those. So moving on to food service, uh, revenues of 897,783. Uh, expenditures of 9.96.11. Debt service funds. 
revenues of uh, 1,162,77 expenditures in 314. We'll have our uh, debt service, we've already got billings on those, our debt service payments that are due August 15th. We'll wire those out about August 13th or so. So we've got adequate funds in hand to, to make those payments. So the plan looks pretty good there. And, uh, the Ranger Field curve, no change there, still in on CD. Ranger Roundup revenues of uh, uh, Two forty-five, six seventy-five, expenditures of four twelve, eight fifty-one, and the, the detail of the revenues there. And that uh, that grant is sure going to help our cash flow there. And of course, the hospital still owes us. For, we've been billed for the hospital district has been billed for their share of things through May, and they, we haven't received that payment yet. Hopefully, that'll be coming in soon. <coughs> In the detail of the expenditures for the Ranger Roundup there on page 82, 83. Okay, we'll get into a few other little odds and ends now here. First is our, uh, we have our, our final ADA numbers that will, which are, our funding is based on for this year. And this summary on page, uh, that's on page 84, it looks like. Our, uh, the key number there is our refined ADA is 1941.361, which is uh, compared to the prior year of 2050.46, which is a decrease of 109 ADA. Uh, we've got the issue of uh, the whole harmless is going to come into play so we shall see how how that makes us work out I think we're we're going to of course the whole harmless goes away for future years so what we what we based our budget on next year is going to be sort of pretty critical that we need to try to try to project what we think we really have so but obviously the trend is not good with losing 109 students ADA in one year. We, we're hopeful that uh, with the, uh, I guess we're going to have an attendance officer, an employee that's going to help with that, and we, part of that funding is going to come from ESSER and maybe part of somewhere else, but that, that would help, uh, help us generate more attendance, which would generate more funding. Because it, it doesn't do us any good if the students are enrolled, they have to be attending to the course to be funded. So, and I've, I've, I've included the reports there to show you the declines uh, by each campus. Uh, Perryton, uh, the high school, decreased 17.61, 17, 17 students basically. Uh, Lutie Martin, had an increase of 4.7. Uh, junior high, a decrease of 46. Perry uh, Kinder, a decrease of 7. James Wright, L. Wright, a decrease of a little under 19 there. And Williams, a decrease of 23. So obviously, decreasing enrollment means, uh, and we've been working on this diligently, decreasing staff. So we got to match our our enrollment with our staff, basing our revenue, equalize our revenue with our expenditure, so to speak, to make sure we're not uh, you know, being prudent with everything. And I'm real pleased with what we've done this year. We've talked about it before, but. Uh, I think we're in good shape there. The next section is I, I wanted to give you, we got our insurance renewal this year. Uh, our, our carrier is Property Casualty Alliance of Texas, and they are the, the number, new, number two insurer across the state. The number one insurer is Tasman Risk Management. And, uh, 
we our, our premium you can see is going up to two hundred and sixty six thousand dollars from the comparison to last year two hundred and seven thousand so so we're we're going it's going up about sixty thousand dollars and that that is PCAP, we we are in an, an agreement a five-year agreement so our, our increase is sort of pretty modest uh, the agent told me that they get uh, the TASME fund, they have turned down nearly all, lots of schools are contacting them about joining the League of TASME. The rates of TASME are up so much more higher. And the reason is the big freeze event that happened basically the rest of Texas besides here. You know, that was the number one insurance event in the history of the state. More claims and more damage. And everything is just a ripple effect of all that. All of it. Of course, our school district came out uh, really, really, really good during that event. A lot better than most of the schools down south, apparently. So we're, we're paying for some of that. In, in ta uh, PCAD, there's little exposure they have. They pick and choose the schools that they want to insure. They have hardly any exposure along the coast for hurricanes and that kind of thing. They refuse to do those. And they, they refuse to be boxed in in one particular geographic area so so I'm pretty pretty pleased with this and part of the increase is due to um, we are insuring our school buses for the full year this year compared to last year all aboard was we were paying for that with a contract with all aboard so that's part of the part of the changes there too but I've given you the declaration pages on the, on our coverage there you can see see all the coverages and the values, uh, the deductibles and all that kind of stuff. So if y'all y'all have any questions or anything at all, we can dig into anything along that. Curious but, as to why there's no liability coverage on fifteen passenger vans. I think well, carrying students. Fifteen passenger vans is considered a uh, an issue where they are sort of top heavy and they tend to roll. Mm -hmm. we, no, don't, we don't have any. We don't have any. Utilizing do we? No, we do not. Okay. We used to. Used to. Uh, that's been, I know, this issue surfaced uh, several years ago, and I think Dumas does have them. And, and I talked, maybe five or six years ago, we talked to them about it, and they, they seem to have never had any problems with it. But that's just an issue that they. Mm -hmm. Of the nature of course the, the, the areas of coverage includes you know cyber coverage crime equipment coverage property damage to buildings and vehicles and also educators legal liability you can see the premium for that auto liability <coughs> and auto physical damage and uh, we, we we work through those every year in in the Sometimes the vehicles and the buses get to a point they're old enough that we're not covering them for property, property coverage. You know, of course, we have liability on them, but it just doesn't, uh, doesn't sort of make sense to include a bus that's maybe worth $1,000 paying insurance on it if it's damaged and stuff. Like that. So we do that every year. But all, all our, I think we're adequately insured and we're the coverages don't see any issues with anything there. So. This is the bulk of our insurance. We have, of course, we have some, uh, another policy on our, our tank owners policy for our underground tanks at the bus barn, and we have, a, of course, uh, accident and liability issues with the uh, athletic program. That we have a you know, that kind of an insurance. But those are basically the insurance all we have in here. So any questions along that line I'd entertain from y'all individually or as a group or anything you want to do. So the next thing is I have a handout for you there on we have our certified values uh, that, that I received. Actually I went and picked them up on the preliminary version of it. So last Friday and I worked over this over the weekend and 
then we got the, the, the real certification there on, on the email on Monday. 19 million, million number there inserted in the middle of the page under the 2021 year. And then the what we budgeted T2 with our template was 972, 624. So we were we under under budgeted T2 on our template by 46 million A62. And then uh, this variance with the prior year shows the, the change and everything. So the same relationship to last year's certified numbers compared to the comptroller's T2 is a decrease of 1.33%. So that projection, so the comp, this, the appraisal district value of 928 million. So I'm projecting the T2 to be the same 1.33% decrease, which puts it at $915 million. <coughs> it seems to me that that's about a reasonable number to do if you compare what the appraisal district had versus the comptroller, that same relationship to what it is this year, continued that projection. So that's what I plan to use in the template is a 915 number, which is a decrease from the appraisal district, but still a pretty a huge decrease from the prior year T2 number. So you also to see how that, that flows. Obviously, it's a big variable going into the year. The same as what we project for attendance. We do that every year on attendance. We say this is what we're going to estimate our ADA to be, and then it, and it, it, sometimes it's right on line, but most of the time it seems to be lower than what we project. Yeah, but it's sort of an inverse deal here. The if we if we project a higher attendance, we get higher state revenues. If we project lower T two, we get higher state revenues. So if we if we project a higher T two number, we would get less state revenues. See, it's 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 a little bit opposite of what you do with ADA. So you could. You could sort of manipulate your projection of revenue by lowering your T2 number, and which would generate, like we did last year, we were we projected more than what we end up getting because we, we were too high on it. So it's just sort of a little nuance. That there's this this is the what we have to deal with because of the immediate settle up this you know like I've done for several years. The values immediately go into the, the actual settle up not like it used to be where it's a year lag so so what you're feeling where we are in the actual budget dollars we're going to end up for this year yes. or next year this year then go ahead <laughs> go ahead and do next year too <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm pretty comfortable i'll have uh, I'll have all of my projections ready for next week. Okay. Hopefully we, we need to have a board meeting next week. Usually we have it the first week of August. And because we need to have a, right after that, we'll need to get the notice to put in the paper for Truth and Taxation Bureau. And so we're going to need to have a, you know, an agreement on what we're going to budget for uh, property back, uh, you know, our, our tax rate for M and O is going to be the same. It's going to be the 9.664, but with the values, you can see the the uh, I and S values are down too. So to generate enough money in, uh, in the I and S tax to pay our debt service, the rate's going to have to go up. So so I'm looking at, and I'll have all those numbers worked out for next week. So I would I would I would guess. A one cent increase in INS or something like that. We will see how that goes. But then we'll, we've got to work on the projection. I'll have the template stuff ready to go and, and we'll look at that. And uh, then after that, the, the last week of August is when we would have our meeting to adopt our budget, you know, the, the Tuesday before the end of the last week. And if y'all wanted to have a meeting in between then, we could. The last year or two, you haven't wanted to do that, but if you did, we could do it. But 
it's sort of with all the pyro variables and all that next year pyro coming in it sort of all funnels down to the week before and getting all those fine tuned to get it right so anything that we would do before that final meeting would just be you know sort of an indication of where we are it won't be fine you know. so you're saying a budget workshop next week sometime yes okay. hopefully maybe a maybe a Tuesday lunch meeting or something like that so it could just be an hour meeting you think you can get yeah, that, yeah. get that done in I think hour? that's what we've done in the past Okay, that's a bad It could be good. evening to either one. We're going to be all live. Right. Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, either one. Well, Wednesday, we've got the fourth, we've got that scavenger hunt, that, right, Dr. Wright? Yeah. Correct. It's in the morning. In the morning, so we can't do it during lunch, probably. I, I would think Tuesday, or I'm, I'm up the board, whatever they want. But we'll, we'll need a, a commitment to put. To, you know the INS rate in the paper and yeah. the the, the M O right obviously was you know a year ago remember we had a a, a vote a seven O vote to approve that adding that one cent yeah. so once we did that that's sort of locked in yeah. so so our M O rate is going to be the same basically y'all got to yeah. obviously the board could vote, vote for a lower tax rate but we would. We would suffer from lower revenues, but you know, but uh, we need that commitment for that so we can publish it, you know, all that right. stuff. So, what do I hear from the board on the meeting next week? Any particular day you like for lunch? I'm out. You're out next week? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be in Weatherford. And we need at least four. <laughs> well, I'm, I can be here. Monday, I'm in Amarillo. I, I can be here. So Tuesday, Richard. I, I don't know, but aim for Tuesday, and I'll try to be there. Should work for me. Connor, let's go Tuesday. All right. Tuesday at noon. Tuesday, Tuesday at, noon. at noon. Budget workshop. Budget workshop. Okay. You bet. Any questions on anything? Uh, Doug, just clarification for me because this is I know they're swimming just like I'm swimming with this okay we have 18% less certified values that doesn't help us any 109 kids less ABA uh, we have cut stuff but supposedly with its t2 values the state makes up that difference well the t2 is the comptroller's certification of our pro district's property wealth it, it's independent of the appraisal district they, they they like you know so they that's the number that the TEA uses in this in the uh, template their template to settle up with this and everything so generally as our property wealth goes down our state funds go up that's that's what I was after yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's an immediate settle up now when our ADA goes down, our state funds go down, and we're stuck. But we, we are sort of insulated from the changes in property values in the same year because, you know, the, obviously the T2 number is going to go down. So we're not as, like, uh, the county, uh, Alcatraz County has sort of similar changes in values that we have. They don't have that luxury. All they can do is tax on what's the certified value. We we are sort of insulated from that to some extent, which we're better off there. Which goes back to what Richard's question was earlier. Uh, how do we look? Does is it promising maybe a balanced budget? I think so. Yeah, I think that's we, that's what I wanted to hear. I knew that's what it I was. think. I think we, yeah, like, like we were talking this morning at administration meeting, you know. You add a staff here, a person here, or do this and that, something's <laughs> got to give. You, you know, once you're committed on salaries, you're, you're committed and we figure out what that's going to cost us and then we work with. And there's, you know, if there was any any place to, you know, to, to make revenue, uh, create revenue, there were, there's probably like three areas, you know, you could, you could, the ADA would be a variable. It's, it's a, it comes in, 
and the t now at the T2 is a variable, and then the collection rate for property taxes is sort of a variable too, but we sort of go with a five-year average, and you know last year's collection rate was terrible compared to what we had the previous years, you know, so that's going to impact us a little bit there, but ultimately what goes into the formula for sub complete setup is that what we actually collect. That when you're projecting it, it doesn't mean anything. It's act actual tax collections and what goes in there. So, but so I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll come back with a balanced budget, and I, that that is definitely what we'll do. Hopefully, we'll have enough to have some capital projects and uh, some other things and technology. But if it has to, we'll cut some things out to make it balanced. Well, my feeling is that this this year is going to be the tough one. I mean, all the what you watch the, even what's going up on down on Main Street, our business is getting better. Separate Tyler's, I guess, but everybody else's business is getting better. Uh, we need to get we need to get through this year. But to, but to clarify something that was said in open session last week, uh, the ADA drives our budget. Yes, and it's and we 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 control the budget by along the ADA guidelines, including staffing and everything else. So I um, wanted to get that in there. So. But like Doug said, guys, you know, I think the last two years we've done a pretty nice job of attrition. You know, when people have left, we've not replaced those positions. And to me, that's the only way you're going to make it because those salaries are 80% of our budget. Well, I think I'm hoping that those lines up there change direction. But again, again, I mean, guys, it's a, it's an uphill battle because I have principals sitting out there, and they're going, "I still need these teachers. I still need these teachers." And so it's it's a struggle, you know. I mean, I'm not just blaming on the principals because the teachers are saying, "I still need it too," because their numbers, class numbers, you know, as you lower number of teachers, your class numbers go up. So that's that's the struggle. Probably one thing to think about on our softball project, we're probably not going to expend that. It's going to be carried over. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll have what we've incurred, which is going to be some, but the bulk of that will be a next year deal. So probably that money will roll back into our fund balance, will be not spent this year. So probably going into the next fiscal year, we'll have to reappropriate that at some point. But it's the same dollars, whether we spend it now or next year, you know, if we can provide for some of it in the next year's budget, we will. But if we can't, we, we might have to do a budget amendment that would, but, but, but the same dollars have added back to our fund balance, so it sort of you know, equalizes it out, so to speak. Thanks, Doug. You're welcome. Any other questions for Doug? No, we'll move on to consent agenda items. Uh, we have three items on the consent agenda. Uh, probably need to do these separately. Does anybody have any reservations against that with the type they are? Uh, if not, then we'll go forward. Uh, as everyone's read the minutes of prior meetings. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the prior meetings? Second. All those in favor? Motion carries 6-0. Budget amendments. Doug? This uh, this first budget amendment number three, uh, there's there's two components of it. Uh, one of it is uh, the our title one, two, three, and four funds, federal funds, and we we're, we're for a school that consolidates those within our general fund. It means that we draw those funds down, we spend them, but we account for those in our general fund, and then we get a reimbursement. And a transfer. So this is the first one. Sort of is a normal reallocation of, of those funds there. That uh, uh, so that's sort of a clean up there. The second one is the the funds that we did not spend last year, and it gives you a, a list of those on page 116. This is from the TA report. We had our Title One meeting last week, and those those funds we have to spend or we if we don't spend them uh, by the end of the grant which is in November but this uh, August we would lose those so those are that we're going to 
add those being it's a balancing deal will create the expenditure and then the offset is the transfer so it's a balanced deal but we we have a plan for all those the others will be absorbed and then that would free the current grant uh, the amounts to be able to roll forward into the next year but we have to spend up the prior year grant or we're going to lose it so uh, the bulk of the title one money is going to an expenditure for this IO, IXL district distance learning <coughs> software that is going to benefit us for five years and then some other other various things like that but uh, that's sort of in a nutshell on that right there so And the, the current year grant for Title I, the row forward was allowed, we can row, we could row forward up to 15%, and the other grants, you can row forward 25% into the next year. This is sort of the first year they had done it this way, so uh, in all the prior years, you, you end up with this year, and that amount is reallocated to your new grant in the new year. But uh, this, is, this was a sort of a, a new deal that it because people you in effect you got two years to spend it in basically the uh, the next amendment is as budget number number four is for some supplemental salaries for uh, the brand new principals at, at the two principals at the junior high and the principal at Wright elementary and the counselor uh, <clears throat> while she worked out in top of texas for Boogie martin and, the, and while she was getting ready at the dinner high, of course, these are supplemental salaries before they really go on their contract, their new contracts. Okay. So that's a, a budget amendment for uh, $35,500, which includes uh, payroll taxes, TRS, and workman's comp, that kind of stuff. It's, it's, not listed there, so. Any questions for Doug on these amendments? Those salaries were really needed to help them get. I don't think we'd be at the, in the position right now to ready for open to open school with these new people if we hadn't done that. So it's just sort of the cost of making these changes because they had to get familiar and had to get. Get things playing and all that kind of stuff. Questions? If not, do I hear a motion to adopt the budget amendments as presented? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Budget amendments passed 6 0. We'll now move on to our 2021 2022 employees and student handbooks yeah and these guys basically we just wanted you to be able to see them uh, this time read through them uh, and then uh, the student handbooks I don't think you passed those I think the only one that wasn't in there was the high schools is that right and mr. Sproul says that uh, the only thing different on his was the dress code which we've talked about and yes. addressed already when we get that together would you forward that at least by yes. email for yep. PDF copy of it or something? Right. I'll give them to Darren um, tomorrow that way you can post them all on the website so and I'll let you know as soon as Okay. One question though um, in the notes from doctors for absences for the junior high it's five days after five consecutive days you have to have a note from a doctor for all the other campuses it's three why the difference? Good question. We probably need to make them all the same. The I didn't, yeah. Okay. I'm glad you. I didn't. I didn't catch that. Yeah. We probably. It would be better if they were all uniform. Sorry. I'm all the way through that. that. Good. I'm glad you did because we do need to straighten that out. Yeah. I wonder if you have a life. <laughs> <laughs> He's a speed reader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every word, man. Every word. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, no, we don't need to vote on no, this. No, there's no action. Yes, yeah, no action. And we'll, we'll talk to the dinner about that. And we will. I mean, my, my guess, probably five would be better all the way through rather than the three. But 
we would see. We'll, see, we'll visit with the principals. Okay, we move on to discussion or action items. Update 117. Okay, again, this was for you all just to look at this time. Uh, we can uh, pass it or approve it if you'd like to or not. The ones, I mean, anything uh, that they do is law except for the local. All the legal is, is law. Uh, the locals, the uh, CH local, which is purchasing and acquisition, CV is facilities and construction, and DEC local is uh, compensation, benefits, and absences. Uh, I don't know if y'all had a chance to look through those enough to know whether or not you want to vote to approve those local, new local ones, or wait till next time. Board. Are there changes? Yeah, th those are the. These are the changes. Changes in the local, uh, our local policy recommendation from uh, Tasby. And the blue is the changes. In the blue, as you look through it, the blue yes. are the changes. Obviously, there's an excess of blue ink because we've scratched out things in red and replaced the exact same figure <laughs> in blue ink. I see my prior comment. <laughs> there you go. It's just numbers. Yeah. It's irritating. A waste of good blue ink, man. Board's preference. Do you want to defer to the next meeting or are you ready to make the changes in the local policies? The purchasing procedures for Doug and for James both are, are our purchasing procedures in place and in stone where everybody understands them. I'm re-asking this question, obviously. I'm just going to say this because I think Doug would probably agree with this. Dr. Little came in and, and really made some changes when he was here on the purchasing and how you could spend it and rules and regulations with it. Uh, and I've been told by other people, possibly I'm not as stiff as he was on some of that stuff so probably we need to revisit that and just say hey we want to continue that because I, I think it did save the district a lot of money so would you agree that Doug? I think so I agree. well in light of the uh, copier thing and all this we I think we just a review, a re review of everything would be healthy and you get Kyle's retiring someplace here I think so that's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> don't get him started. I got him started the other day. I mean, you don't do that. We've uh, our copies. We got we got contracts with uh, agreements with both vendors. We got the ones with uh, SBC today, and they're happy with their situation. And, and the other the other firm, McGill's, is happy with their situation. So I think yeah, I think I, I, I think, think it's just a reminder of that yeah. that. Uh, uh, there were some questions there about how everything was, was administered, and I think it would be good with, again, with you yeah. leaving to remind everybody. You bet. Yeah. Okay. Policies, what's our pleasure? Motion to approve. Get changed in a second. I have a motion and approve, and, and a motion and a second to approve the policies. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Mr. Morales, you have some recommendations for us on uh, personnel contracts? Yes, the, there'll be three different, or four, I guess, different recommendations. Recommendation to hire the blow personnel on a one year probationary contract for the 2021 2022 school year. Uh, Jonathan Delgado, uh, Periton High School Spanish teacher. John DeSantiago, a Periton Junior High PE teacher coach. Lily Mack, uh, Periton Junior High LEAR teacher. Uh, Taylor Nettler, Periton Junior High health teacher coach, dual probationary contract. Laura Warner, Williams fourth grade teacher. Lauren Brown, Wright first grade teacher. Adrian Langford, Wright, second grade teacher. Fabiola Turan, a Wright, third grade teacher. Oh, yeah, thank you. 
Yeah, and then uh, Lacey Mayfield as a kindergarten uh, teacher, kinder. Uh, also on the, I'll let, let y'all vote on that. Okay. Motion. Yes. yes, I need to add uh, Kim Magara, a Williams RN nurse, and Luz Garcia, kinder pre-K dual language teacher. And that got it. Okay. Because I missed that one. Do I hear a motion on those recommendations by Mr. Morales? So, so All those in favor? Aye. Uh, no. Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Okay, on this uh, next recommendation to hire below personnel on a one year non certified CTE contract for the 2021 2022 school year, Courtney Ariana uh, as a junior high technology applications. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries 6 0. And recommendation, recommendation we hire personnel on a one year term contract for the 2021 2022 school year. Richard North, uh, Periton High School history teacher. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Motion passes 6 0. Recommend we hire the below personnel on an ESSER three funded position on a one year probationary contract for the 2021 2022 school year. Uh, George Kane as the district attendant and truancy <coughs> prevention coordinator. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes 6 0. All right. We now move to possible consideration and action on ESC Region 16 contracts for the 2021-2022 school year. Okay. Have that yes. Does everybody have the handout here? It lists all the contracts we have with Region 16 in Amarillo. Uh, Dr. Rock and I went through this the other day and looked at each one of them to see if, if we were using them, how much we used them, and, and some were added, some were taken off. Uh, but uh, of all the contracts we have there, I think we're at $125,852. Uh, Doc Park, how many, how many of these were new? Do you remember? Contracts? I know DMAC, we added a few things on DMAC. We added the RTI, <coughs> and we took off the um, the personal graduation plans. They were not being utilized at the high school or um, Ruby Pena Martin. And we took another one off that the high school is not using there as well. Uh, so we did add those. The DMAC is a little bit higher than before. And then we also added on, under instructional support, we added uh, one additional numeracy contract. We have Williams Elementary participating with uh, nine teachers, and that is three teachers per contract. So we have uh, three groups going to Region 16 and participating in that training uh, for the 7,500. I think we had two last year at Perry Kinder and Wright Elementary, so we're moving up to Williams Elementary. And some of these guys, we had to wait until our federal, uh, we've applied for our federal grants because a lot of this is paid out of grant money, federal money. Uh, the other one that's not on here that we did stick in our cart was our till, which is going to be paid out of ESSER money, and it'll add another 20000 to this. That's the deal that, uh, what's the name, talk yes. Renee talked to us last yes. board meeting about, and I think it's going to really help our district, but it wasn't in there because uh, the ESSER grant, I think, we just applied for it yesterday or the day before. So, anyway, uh, I think they're... It looks like a lot of money, but again, there's a lot of services that they do provide for us that we need. As long as we're using them. And, and like I said, we went through and actually looked at that and asked questions. Last time I asked, <coughs> that, last time I asked that question, I got a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's where we are. I think it's an appropriate question. It is. I think I think what I saw before was that it gets, some of the stuff gets put on autopilot. Yeah. And I can even tell you this, um, and I have two principals here, but Dan's here too also. 
Dr. Rock has done a really good job of this year going through how we were spending money on different programs and weren't using them and certain people were and we've tried to pull them together and everybody use the same programs and not have scattered programs everywhere and so we're, we're doing that as, as we're pulling things together. The one that had a huge difference was the last one on the back page, the virtual learning services. We were in a three-year contract and paying $12,500 not being utilized. Uh, so they, Region 16 has changed the services on this and any of the trainings that Region 16 offers, if we are not able to travel, they all we have to do is let them know that we will participate by Zoom or virtually and they will do the setup so that we can participate from here. And that's at a thirty-five hundred dollar cost. But that was a three-year contract signed a year ago. By Dr. Little. Dr. Little. Yes. So that one got eliminated. Good. So that saved us some. Good for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said good. <laughs> video conferencing is when you drop number two. That's the one we Yeah, got. video conferencing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it is less, uh, 120, I think before it was 125, Mr. Morales? Yes. 125,000 and yeah. it's still comparable to 121,000 when we added these to the card. And I think last year we started off and we added some after we started the year. So that could still happen, if, depending if we need them or not. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion for approval of the contracts for Region 16 is presented? Motion. Okay. Second. All right. Do you have a discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Uh, okay. We now have a consideration and possible action on a revised resolution of the Parrot National Bank concerning authorized banking powers. Doug? Yes, we uh, we did this back uh, in December last year, but, but since the change in the board, board president, uh, Joe is the president, and uh, Tyler is our secretary, uh, we're, we're adding, basically adding Tyler Merkel and taking off Monty Kenner. Basically everything else will be the same. So I would, we recommend that we get that, that change done. And then once we approve it, I have a, a whole bunch of account signatures I need to get you two to sign okay. before we get away. All right. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve Doug's recommendation? Second. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Uh, Mr. Morales, I understand on item E, we're going to defer that. Till next meeting, till we things settle down, and we see what regulations are coming out uh, for CDC. The, for, by the, from, from the CDC. Uh, one thing we don't have, we need to set a meeting date for next month, next August. Do you know what that date was? On the employee handbook, I just kept it to on the fourth Tuesday of mm -hmm. every month. Okay. Um, yeah, it needs to be that last week. Okay. Yeah, I, I was looking oh, yeah, because of uh, because uh, of the deal. Tax. The last Tuesday of the month is August thirtieth. It's fine. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, August, August 30th. The last first. day? No, August 31st is the last day of, t of the last Tuesday of the month, okay. August 31st. Okay. Yeah. Is it usually the fourth Tuesday? Okay, the fourth Tuesday then is August the 24th. That's better for me. Is that okay with you, Doug, with the budget and everything? 24. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I, I will try to make it better. I would rather have the last one, but we'll, we'll see. Well, I won't be here. You won't have to listen to me about the budget. <laughs> but well, I want you here. <laughs> Other comments? Set a date. <clears throat> let's let's just go for the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth, six o'clock. Okay. Any other things to come before the board? If not, I declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>